evening. Uh, welcome to On Deck with Mercury. My name is Mercury Payton. I'm the town manager of, of Vienna. And um, this evening, we have a wonderful topic to discuss. It is what the Liberty Amendments mean to us today. Um, I have a wonderful panel here um, with me to, to my left um, and to your right um, is Stacy Say, who is with First Baptist Church, um, Lee Kitchener, who is from HBI, Historic Vienna, Inc., uh, Council Member uh, Chuck Anderson, uh, Mayor Linda Colbert, and then here we have a few students, and I'll allow them to say a little bit about themselves. Um, to my immediate right is Omar Payton, who is my son. Um, so what school do you go to and what's your major? So I go to a Christian uh, university that is uh, over in uh, Cedarville, Ohio, called Cedarville University. Um, I'm a senior there, and I'm studying IT management. OK, OK, wonderful. And then to uh, his right is Luke Kirchina. And a little bit about yourself. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm Luke. Um, I will be a senior at James Madison High School here in Vienna uh, this fall. Excited to be here. OK, thanks. And then uh, next we have Neil Going, who is a college student. Uh, a little bit about yourself. Hello. I'm Neil Going. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, and his. I grew up in Vienna, and I just graduated from the College of William & Mary with a BA in philosophy and gender, sexuality, and women's studies. OK, awesome. And then to his right is Ella Hardman. Uh, a little bit about yourself. Uh, hi, I'm Ella Hardman. I'm going to go into my um, junior year at James Madison High School. So. Very excited to be here. OK, excellent. Uh, so I'm going to look to my left here just uh, briefly and ask um, the panelists uh, to maybe talk a little bit about how Liberty Amendments Month has gone over the last uh, couple of weeks, some impressions that you all have. Well, I've gotten a lot of feedback. When I put out the yard signs, and there are 60 yard signs all around town, I get people stopping me and saying, oh my gosh, I learned so much last week. Or the person on the town green who likes to come and sit under the trees, all of the 15th Amendment signs were there. She said, all week long, she said, everybody kept stopping and reading the signs and saying how much they learned. I learned a lot making it. They learned a lot reading it. The events that we've had at the First Baptist and all over town all kinds of music events, cultural events, lectures, panels, uh, kids' events, even events for toddlers, children performing. It's been wonderful. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Uh, anyone else? Stacy? I'd agree. I think that one of the benefits of the way that Liberty Amendments Month has been planned is that we've been able to kind of have something for everybody. Um, <clears throat> whether you have an interest in just theater. So the dramatizations that we did with Harriet Tubman and Rosa Parks at the church were phenomenal. We were able to showcase some of the young Vienna talent on Sunday um, through the Girl Scouts. And so that was also a treat. But then if you were interested in something a little more academic, there were um, those opportunities as well. And I was just really excited to be able to be a part of the dialogue and in the planning. Well, I've said this on several occasions, and that is that the whole concept of liberty amendments is, is a little complicated mm -hmm. at first. Um, but what has been very inspiring is that when we explain to people what we're trying to do here, which is celebrate those amendments which have broadened um, freedoms and liberties for all people, um, it's been met with almost universal acclaim. Well, that's a great idea. Yeah. Um, We've touched a lot of people in this area with that notion. And uh, for me, one of the most heartening and I think positive aspects of Liberty Amendments Month has been how many different organizations mm -hmm. have worked together for the first time as a community to bring something to fruition, something that has never been done before by any community. And it has been a wonderful experience to be on these Zoom calls with a <laughs> planning committee of over 100 members. And it actually kind of worked. <laughs> Mayor Colbert. Well, um, 
I agree, Chuck. I think anytime we can get the community involved, uh, that's a positive thing. And, and it is such a positive, positive month. Everything about it is about unity. It's about uh, coming together and celebrating um, these amendments. And so I've also seen, you know, different groups kind of, uh, you know, kind of getting involved at the last minute going, oh, gosh, I'm glad I did that. The, the committee was so great about letting them do that. But I think what's going to happen is I've watched people watching and thinking, oh, I have a group that can get involved next year or I'm going to do this next year. And so it's certainly because it's going to be annual. Um, it's just going to grow, and we're going to continue to get people involved. And I think the other thing is learning. Yeah. I know I've learned about, you know, I knew what the amendments were, but listening to people's speeches, just watching the Girl Scouts um, play or watching the Baha'i Faith uh, children get up, um, I learned something there. And I think we're all learning about each other, but also about the amendments. So anytime I think, too, that we're learning, I think is um, is a good thing. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. And one thing I think about is the people that we've been able to uh, get to participate. For example, uh, the, one of the attorneys who was on the Loving case, to be able to get someone uh, of that caliber to participate, and Congressman uh, Connolly to be uh, involved, and uh, the president of George Mason University, and the list goes on and on of the individuals who took their time to participate with something of this magnitude on the, its inaugural um, beginnings of, of what we're doing here. It was really um, exciting. Um, what are what are residents saying? What are, I know that Lee touched on that a little bit about what she's been hearing. Um, what are residents saying about uh, the event in general? What are some of the things you're hearing? Uh, so you know, right when we started on Juneteenth. Juneteenth was such a positive uh, day, wasn't it? I just, I just felt the love. I really did. I know that may sound a little corny, but I really did. I felt like the community just so came together, and and like Chuck said, it has been so positive. I mean, the the support we've had from the community has been amazing. So um, that's what I'm hearing. Just, yeah. just all positive, good comments, um, things, and I think. You know, having so many different activities. Now, I'm sure that the committee is going, oh my gosh, we're exhausted. But <laughs> I get that. However, it has allowed people with their busy schedules to pick the things that they're interested in, the things they have time for. Um, it's not just a one day event. Oop, I missed it. You know, it's it's throughout the whole month. So I know that it's it's gotten different people involved, and some people are more interested in going to one thing than another. So. I've heard that too. That's awesome. I think I'd like to add that people have said how proud they are that Vienna is doing this and that Vienna is leading the way on this. Yeah. And those who missed some of the events that were streamed or YouTubed, mm -hmm. they've gone back and looked at the YouTubes. And that will be a lasting legacy that anybody can pick up and look at. And one of the things that I've heard repeatedly is that we have created a venue, and this was deliberate. We wanted to do this for people not to eat, just to reflect on the past, but to also talk about difficult issues mm -hmm. in, in a way that is not as divisive as um, other conversations going on in the country. Right. Because we start with our common foundational principles, which are the amendments themselves. But then we go forward thinking, thinking these are the concepts in the philosophical principles. How do we apply them today? Right. And I think that's been one of the most beneficial things. And our residents have gotten it, and they yeah. have participated in those conversations. There's been some really emotional moments in mm -hmm. Liberty Amendments uh, Month, and, uh, and and I think that can only benefit us um, in the long run. Right, and and those emotional moments, those are those are okay and, and actually needed. And when you think about the fact that um, it's a patriotic theme, it's something that we can all unite around. We, so many different backgrounds of all the people that participate and make up who Vienna is, even, even today. And so with these four amendments, bringing people together under a common theme with the common respect for one another, common backgrounds, common points of view, um, it's, just, it's just phenomenal. Um, Stacy, anything that you want to add to that? I would add that it's gotten us out of our silos. Mm -hmm. I think that we all have our groups that we work with, and we work with those groups. Um, 
I'm not aware, at least in recent years, at least not while I've been a part of the staff of First Baptist formally working with HVI, but we worked very closely yeah. together. I felt like I worked as closely with Lee at times as I did with our staff because we were in so many Zoom right. meetings. And the other thing is that sometimes we don't know what's comfortable. So one example was prior to the Juneteenth celebration, we received a general email to our general email box from a member of the community that was like, we want to come out and share Juneteenth with First Baptist, but we're white and we don't know whether it's appropriate for us to be there. So it gave us a chance to have that dialogue and be like, of course it's okay for you to be here. Like we're, we're all one big family, but to, so to, to have the opportunity to be able to answer that question because not everybody would even want to ask that question. Right. And then to be able to come together and work together and be like, yeah, we all have these differing backgrounds and we all look different, but we're all settled under this one set of amendments and we all have these commonalities and that we need to come together and work mm -hmm. together and work really hard together yeah. and have fun together like we did at the celebration. But it's something that we all celebrate, not just African Americans who happen to attend First Baptist. So it's been a really great opportunity for dialogue. Right. And thank you so much for First Baptist playing such a vital role in uh, the kickoff and and even the uh, the 19th Amendment piece as well. So thank you so much. Uh, so pass it along to Pastor Walton. I'll do that. <laughs> right. Okay. So um, here's a quick overview of of the four amendments that um, comprise of what we call the Liberty uh, Amendments. Uh, the 13th Amendment, which um, about a slavery, um, so vital and key to uh, the fabric of, of America, American society. Um, I mean, I can't imagine a land where people would own another um, person. Um, and that's, that's what the past was, but um, to have the foresight to look at ourselves in the mirror and say, well, wait a minute, this is not um, who we should be. And our, even our founding documents talk about being created equal. So uh, to get to a point where the 13th Amendment was established and, and, and ratified is, is phenomenal. And then you think about the 14th Amendment, which gets into citizenship for people and due process and equal protection under the law, which uh, again, I mean, think about how we move in this society um, from one county to another, from one state to another, and to be able to have uh, due process afforded and citizenship and rights is just um, it's just something that uh, is just wonderful. And then the 15th Amendment, which gave uh, rights to vote to those who were former slaves. Uh, you can think about a time period in which uh, only certain people could vote. Uh, imagine living in a place where you cannot determine how you're to be governed. Uh, you just live in the land and other people are making those determinations. Well, the 15th Amendment was the first part of a series of dominoes that fell that enabled a number of people to realize the, the right to vote. Uh, and then we get into 19th Amendment, which fell as well uh, after the 15th Amendment and the 19th Amendment giving women the right, right to vote. So uh, it's phenomenal to think about these four amendments in this context is interwoven into uh, the ground that we walk on. It's interwoven into the air we breathe. It's part of what makes us American is the fact that we do have these rights. Um, they're afforded to us, and I, I get excited thinking about it. So these are the four members that we're, we're talking about. So I'm going to turn to the students here because, of course, the students are the future. Um, you know, I feel young sitting next to you all. Uh, so I'm going to turn to you and ask uh, the question, what, what do these amendments mean to you? Uh, what, what do they mean to you? I mean, to me, they mean um, a whole lot. Um, you know, one thing I really love, um, you know, the, the 15th and the 19th Amendments, because um, especially as someone like me, as you know, I'm a, a little bit politically minded. But what I love about these amendments is they um, allowed African-Americans and former slaves and women, like all citizens, to be able to have a say in how they're governed and really for themselves decide, you know, this is, you know, a person who I think is going to be advocating for um, for my rights and is going to, um, you know, put in policies that are going to be beneficial to me and really um, help preserve my freedom. So I'm really thankful for those amendments. 
That's a, that's excellent. Any, anyone else? Ella. I'll go ahead. I mean, you know, I'm the youngest here, so as I remember in history every year, we'd learn a little bit more, mm -hmm. and especially, you know, because there are small amount of people that look like me in my classes, and I'd always be so intrigued yeah. to hear more every year and very excited to hear more every year, and also, you know, going to other younger students' classes and hearing, seeing their faces when they get to hear what they get to hear and mm -hmm. seeing support, it's exciting to see, you know, change and looking back i realized how exciting it was for me to hear mm -hmm. you know when slaves got to vote and women got to vote because yeah. those people finally got the chance to be able to say what they needed to say and wanted to say and hadn't right. been able to say for a long time you know yeah. and they had to sit in silence and finally could say stuff so it was it was really cool to hear about growing up that's that's yeah. great that's excellent yeah look. um i think um as someone who has never really, or not never, but has not had to face on a daily basis the continued issues um, in the same way that so many people have in our country, it can definitely be easy to get comfortable um, and think that the work is done and mm -hmm. think that looking at the amendments that, oh, they've been added into law, that means that we're good mm -hmm. and we can check out. It can be easy to have that mindset um, because it's, it's easier, it's less work, um, but I think having these discussions, um, learning about the amendments, like you were saying, in schools and having events um, is so important because it reminds me um, and I think other people um, just how important they were and how mm -hmm. just because they were passed into law, it didn't mean that they were entirely put into practice. There were still decades of Jim Crow laws and segregation and discrimination and these things that persist to today um, and I think it's so important to realize that not only are the laws so important, but the support and efforts of the community, of the public, um, of everyone, no matter who they are, especially those who are in positions of power, who are in positions of privilege. Um, it's amazing to be reminded of the history, to be reminded of the calling that we all have as Americans to support one another and to continue fighting um, for equality um, and just equal treatment like that. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. I like the way that you frame that up because, you know, these amendments are passed, but it doesn't really change the human heart. So it allows for uh, mobility in society, but I think you're getting into a, another point, which is, okay, now what, right? So how do we treat each other given that these are laws on the books, now there's a, another responsibility, and that is, okay, how do we treat each other? Um, so Neil, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think it sort of gives me, at least this discussion gives me a feeling of you know, excitement and hope. Um, I think that, like one, it's exciting because you know, like, they're written down like 10 miles west of us or something, but like, they're active documents. People spend millions of dollars to lobby, to influence the Supreme Court, um, because they actively shape our land. So um, I know as a member of the LGBTQ community, um, something that's really important to me is the 14th Amendment and specifically the Equal Protections Clause. Um, because many of the rights and protections that we found, whether it's same-sex marriage to most recently employment with Bostock v. Uh, Clayton County, Georgia, um, has been based off of just those few words. You know, um, so I try to, you know, take into account of how much it's valued, those, those few words, how differently we can interpret them. Um, but it really gives me hope to see how far we've come mm -hmm. along the way um, that hopefully we'll keep adding some amendments and keep uh, revising things. But I think it starts in conversations like these. Yeah, and, and that's so important. When you think about no matter what your background, um, to have protection, to have uh, safety and to understand that the laws of the land um, give us give us access to employment um, and protect us um, is so vital to the fabric of who we are as Americans. So, I mean, the 14th Amendment, I, I agree 100% that it is just wonderful to know that we have equal protection, due process, and there are a number of cases that have come out of that 14th Amendment, just like you just mentioned. Um, anything else that you like, you all like to um, to, to share uh, about what these mean to you? I mean, you know, in the town where majority mm -hmm. of my friends are white mm -hmm. and seeing every day them learning new things and the way that they, you know, they don't say, you know, I understand how you feel, but they always listen 
and they're very up to date with me and you know they'll check in they'll say oh did you hear this you know there was a great moment with this and this and this and mm -hmm. you know they they're teaching me as much as i'm teaching them because they'll ask me questions mm -hmm. you know and sometimes i won't have answers to them but i give them what i know right. and they have great responses towards me and stuff like that so trust you see in this town mm -hmm. especially people right. learning people understanding you know you can confide in one another about stuff like this and they'll listen right they'll listen 100 percent the whole way through and you know they'll be there to support you no matter what so yeah and, and that's i like the way you put that because um we're not going to have all the answers right i mean and, that, and that's actually comforting to know that we don't have to have all the answers in every moment mm -hmm. but as long as we interact with one another and grow from one another then we can all get better and there's no pressure to in this moment okay i've got this question from someone how do I even answer this question? Just the fact that you're having a dialogue and that conversation, you're, you're, you're growing from that, from that conversation. Uh, so the, I'll just uh, end with this question here. Um, so there's a high price that was paid for these amendments to happen. There was bloodshed and in some cases torture, other things, people risked their lives to get to this point. Um, so in the effort of trying to strive toward a more perfect union, um, how will the sacrifices of the people of the past influence your life going forward? I know it's a long question. <laughs> I didn't write the question. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, I think I th similar to what I was saying earlier um, with learning about the amendments um, and what happened after, um, I think also learning about the fights that were fought, um, the way people fought, how passionate they were, um, how communities rallied to fight for their rights, for their protections. Um, again, it's that reminder that we can continue to do that. We should continue to do that. Um, and it's so important not to forget um, the sacrifices that people made, the things that they went through, the things that they endured um, in an era that was much more um, blatantly discriminatory than our own. Um, and just thinking out about how difficult that would be um, and how important it is to continue that, yeah, continue I mean, their work. Yeah, that's, and that's an uh, excellent point. And one of the things I think about and just reminds me of is, you know, my parents telling me stories about things that they went through and that they observed. And what resonated was the fact that, you know, the peaceful, nonviolent protest and or even just trying to do something ordinary that would cause a change. It was, a, it was an inflection point. And so um, in, there's, a, there's a way to, to, to go at it and a way to um, try to um, cause change for good. And I think that there are some really good examples from the past of, of how to have dignity and, and respect as you go forward trying to advocate for um, what change should look like. Um, I think Dr. King um, was, was a good example of that. The peaceful way and that he was a catalyst for change was uh, just was phenomenal. Um, any, any, anyone else uh, as far as like how this will shape your life going forward? I mean, I'd like to think that the ones that have passed know and are proud that we're you know making a change. I mean, we and they both know that it's not done, but we're making a good amount of progress and we'll keep making progress until we are where we need to be and i mean there are times where you know i go places especially being around dc you know dr king was you walk on those same steps where everyone walked and you you feel it you know and it makes it gives you the strength to realize that there's still yeah. more to do and they're standing beside you as you're you know working hard to get to where you want to be and where they want to be as well and they're going to be helping us as much as they can as we keep moving forward so yeah. absolutely absolutely yeah and and for me uh, especially like being um a man of faith too um what you see a lot in the bible is um you know how people are you know fighting um you know for their religion and for their ideals how that reflects how important that is and i see that really reflected um here in looking at how fiercely 
people have fought and advocated for civil rights. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even though that fight does not look exactly the same today as it does then, I think that that kind of shows us how important yeah. civil rights continues to be and how we all need to, uh, you know, find our different ways of supporting civil rights mm -hmm. and advocating for right. it um, in whatever way makes sense. Right, and, and that's, that's so true. You, you really can't think about the civil rights movement um, and uh, the era right after slavery without thinking about the impact of the church um, um, and the, the Negro spirituals and um, the, the way that people saw that they had dignity. Yes. Um, and no matter what others said about them, they knew that they were uh, created with dignity. And so uh, it's almost impossible to extract out that striving for that dignity and, 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 and not recognize the fact that the church did have a role in that um, as part of our history. That's, that's phenomenal. Um, Neil, you have the last, last word here. Yeah, definitely. Um, I would say it feels inspiring. Um, yeah. The more that I've learned about the history, um, I've, spelt, I've felt more inspired and um, engaged. It's really been pivotal to my life. Um, if I could, I would spend my entire life advocating for LGBTQ people, for minorities and everyone. Um, I guess the, the one anecdote, if, you, if I can share, um, that was really, that really changed how um, I thought about this and to see where is there an opportunity for growth um, with how things stand right now um, was I learned in one of my philosophy classes about a case called de Graff and Reed v. General Motors. And it was in 1976. Um, it was five black women um, who said, we have a case against General Motors. Um, they're discriminating against us um, as black women. And so that was revolutionary because the way that Title um, Seven of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 is written is that we have um, what could be called like unidimensional or one way of thinking uh, forms of discrimination. So we could say you're discriminated against based off of sex or you're discriminated against based off of race. Um, but then once we combine things, the court isn't necessarily able to to process that. Um, so. I think that's a huge opportunity for growth and seeing how we have the amendments as they're written right now um, along, you know, we're trying to include sexual orientation and gender and things, but we also see that plenty of people are discriminated against not just on one um, thing, for being a woman or for being disabled um, or for whatever gender they have. Uh, so that gives me hope. That's something that I'd like to fight for. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. And thank you to everyone. Um, one thing that Fi and fi and the final analysis of all this, yeah. as I think about um, these amendments, is how everything that we've just talked about here tonight um, ties us together. I mean, we're all Americans. We're all united under the same flag. Um, we have the same struggles, uh, have the same desires, needs, wants, um, and you know, generally speaking. And it's just a wonderful thing, I think, that we can. Um, have a discussion of some, so many different points of view um, and love one another, care for one another, want the good and best for one another. Um, and that's what I think about when I think about the Liberty Amendments. When I think about um, our nation and how wonderful it is. Um, a, lot of, a lot of struggles along the way. And, and, that's, and that's, that's okay. I mean, I think that uh, with struggle, there's growth. And so um, I'm excited about um, what we're doing here in Vienna uh, with regard to Liberty Amendments Month. And I look forward to next year's uh, event. Um, I know there's already some planning going on as far as what that's going to look like. Um, I'd like to thank all of uh, the panelists here to my left and to my right, um, especially the students, all four of you. Um, I, I think you added a lot to this conversation. I think that. Um, Hopefully, hopefully that you all have grown from this conversation. And as you um, go out into the world, um, I'm expecting that all four of you are going to make a lot of change for uh, the, the good of our society. So um, thank you very much for tuning in to um, On Deck with Mercury. Um, a special thanks to Michael Amore, who allowed us to use uh, Cafe Amore as our uh, location here this evening. And we look forward to having you with us next month with On Deck with Mercury. Thank you very much.